When is something optically active? Yeah, that was my other question. Um, well, a molecule is optically active if it's chiral. A molecule chiral just means that it has coordinates. It it's a stereo center? Uh, that's, no, that's, there's actually there's a, a lot to that. So we can look at some examples. So to look at some examples, uh, first of all, let's say we have a solution of this. Um, so is this a chiral molecule? No. No, because this is not a stereocenter. No stereocenters, this is achiral. So would this solution be optically active? No. No, so this is pretty clear. This is not optically active. What does that mean? It means it doesn't rotate plane polarized light. A pure solution of this would not rotate plane polarized light. So far, so good. Uh, Center. So this is a chiral molecule, so would it be optically active? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and it would rotate plane polarized light. Okay. okay. Now, let's, uh, there are some complications here, so uh, let's keep going. First of all, Now let's say we have a solution that's 50% this molecule and 50% this molecule. So the solution is 50% this and 50% this. Now this is a chiral molecule because it has a stereocenter, and this is a chiral molecule because it's a stereocenter. Oh, they cancel each other out. Yeah, because these are enantiomers, right? You can tell they're enantiomers because they differ by a single swap. They differ by swapping the iodine and the bromine, so these are enantiomers. So even though each of these molecules is chiral, the solution is optically inactive. Would both pictures have to be drawn for us to realize that? Or, like, if it said 50% of this one and it didn't draw the other picture, would we be able to tell that it's optically inactive? Well, they have to tell you what the other 50% is. But if they tell you 50% this and 50% the enantiomer, then you would know that it's optically inactive. You can't really tell whether a solution is optically active or not, or not unless you know all the components. So it would be impossible unless they told us both of the components and the percentages. Of course, this is a racemic mixture. You've probably already learned that racemic mixtures are optically inactive. And the reason is that the two molecules cancel each other. So what we're learning here is, what does the word chiral refer to? The word chiral refers to a molecule. But what does the word optically inactive or optically active refer to? That refers to the solution. So those are different types of terms. Chiral and achiral refer to molecules, but optically active and optically inactive refer to this whole solution. So we can, re we can review how that applies to this little example. What if it was 60-40? Uh, yeah, so let's go through that. So first of all, is this a chiral molecule? Yes. Yes, and is this a chiral molecule? Yes. Yes, but is this an optically active solution? No, so you can see chiral and optically active are different things because chiral refers to each molecule and optically active refers to the solution. But if All right. you have a solution made of only one of them, then it would be optically active. That's true. Or, let's just look at this example. Suppose it was 60-40. Would this be optically active? Yes. Yes, it would because only 40% of these <laughs> would be canceled. Because there's an imbalance, this would be optically active. So this would be, uh, here we would have again two chiral molecules, and they don't totally cancel each other out, because there's more of this one than this one. So now, this would be an optically active solution. And would it be, it would be negative if it's... The rotation. <laughs> now, it turns out, so negative and positive refer to whether the light would be rotated clockwise or counterclockwise, right? Po a plus sign means clockwise rotation, a negative sign means counterclockwise rotation. You cannot tell what the direction of the rotation is by looking at the board. That's an experimental fact. 
You can only tell what the direction of the rotation is by doing the experiment in the lab. In particular, plus and minus has nothing to do with R and S. We can definitely tell which of these is R and which of these is S. We can tell which of these is R and which of these is S, but that has nothing to do with how they rotate the light. That's the plus and the minus symbols, and that you could only tell by experiment. That, that's actually a common trap on exams, so it's important to watch out for that. So if they tell you it's, let's say, like negative 134? Yeah. What can you assume from, you can assume that it, oh, yeah, I remember you telling us this last time, yes. and that doesn't, yeah. it has nothing to do with R, it's just the way it rotates the light. Yeah. Did you get this story of your screen All right. You guys have stereochemistry mm -hmm. handouts, right? So if you look at the back side here, I summarized R and S and plus or minus. So plus and minus indicates the rotation of the light, clockwise or counterclockwise, determined from experiment, not from R or S. R and S only um, does not indicate the direction of the light is rotated. All right, so I put that in the handout because that actually is a common mistake and trap uh, on tests. Okay. Um, so this example makes sense here that this was optically active. All right, now we have to do one more example here on this topic of optically active or inactive. If you have a solution made of like one thing that's chiral and one thing that's not chiral, then is it somewhat optically active? That's right, because again, um, the thing that is uh, chiral would tend to rotate the light, and the thing that's not chiral would have no effect. So is it as optically active as the percentage of the chiral molecule that there is in the solution? That's right. Okay. That's right. Thanks. <coughs> Let's say we have a solution that's 100% this molecule. Would this be optically active? No. no. And because? <coughs> no, wouldn't it be yes? No, because it's not chiral. But there is a chiral in there. There is a, there, there's two chiral centers. That's right. So let's take our time there. The, the term chiral center is a standard no, term, but it's actually it's confusing. Not, it's not. Let's use the term stereo center instead. It's not a stereo center because there's symmetry. Yeah, it's a meso yes. compound. So let's put those pieces together. Yes. <laughs> um, does this molecule have stereo centers? Yes. yes. How many? Two. Yeah, it's always good to ask for the stereo centers. So it does have stereo centers. Those could be called chiral centers, but that's actually a confusing term. Let's just call those stereo centers. So here we have stereo centers. So there are stereo centers. Um, so yes, there are stereo centers. Now, is this a chiral molecule? No. No. It's a chiral. Because it has a plane of symmetry, which means that these two stereocenters are going to cancel each other out. Now, there's a special name for a molecule that's achiral, even though it has stereocenters. Meso. Yeah. Meso. So this is meso. So, would this solution be optically active or optically inactive? Optically yeah. inactive. Optically, optically inactive. Okay. So I wanted to mention this because earlier when we were talking about this, we were brainstorming a little. And I think somebody said, oh, if you have stereocenters, then it's optically active. You can say it's a little bit more complicated than that because the stereocenters could cancel each other out. This is kind of similar to what we saw before. Earlier we looked at two enantiomers, and we saw that the two enantiomers could cancel each other out. Both of the enantiomers had stereocenters, and those two stereocenters cancel each other out. Well, this is kind of the same thing, except now the two stereocenters are in the same molecule and they're still canceling each other out. So the way the two enantiomers cancel each other out is kind of similar to the way the two stereocenters in the same mesomolecule can cancel each other out. Okay, so the hard part about stereochemistry is there's lots of terms, and it's easy to confuse them. So we saw chiral and optically active are different terms. Optically active refers to the solution. Chiral refers to the molecule. You can have a chiral molecule, but if it's canceled by another chiral molecule, the solution can still be optically inactive. Uh, a lot of those terms are in the handouts, um, again. So at the top here, it shows the difference between achiral, chiral, and meso. I didn't include optically active or inactive in there, though, so maybe I should do that in the future, but, but we talked about that. Okay.